This week we're talking about these two bad boys. What's up guys and welcome back to 40 Runs. Now if this is your first time at 40 Runs, I want you to smash that pink button down there that says subscribe on it, go to our Facebook page and join the 40 Runs running community and check out the description, there's loads of cool things down there. Right, marathon racing shoes, let's get stuck in. Right guys, so here we go, we've got the two sort of favourite uh, racing shoes, marathon racing shoes at the moment. I've not got the Alpha Fly yet, uh, we will do a video when we get that, but at the moment we're talking about these two, because uh, these are still readily available. The Brooks Hyperion Elite, if you've not seen the video I did uh, at the start of the week or middle of the week, I can't remember when I did it, uh, have a look at that, check it out uh, when I talk about this in particular. But just to quickly go through some of the stats, I'll put them up, but you've got, like that one, you've got the carbon plate in it, you've got the high stack, this is 35mm, 8mm drop, you've got the bio um, DNA uh, zero, uh, sorry, DNA zero midsole which is where they're shaved a lot of the weight You've got new upper which is very minimalistic and is as light as a feather as you'd expect from both of these shoes right the problem i have with this shoe for me is that it is very very firm uh, and that's why i wanted to compare it to this so if i'm comparing the two um and so and i'll put up with regards to the stats how they feel when you run this feels like you're running on trampolines right it's very soft it's very no, no it's not that's the wrong word it's, it's very springy better way so you get a real good energy return out of the midsole versus this you really feel like you can really run fast in these this shoe feels minimalistic and more like a racing flat than this this is a very weird feeling when you first put this on versus this this feels like i say a racing flat when you put that on this is a weird sensation this shoe has a very, very narrow uh, part across the middle of the um, outsole, the, sorry, the midfoot, sorry, outsole, what am I talking about? Across here, as you can see, where they've shaved weight. This has got a very, I wouldn't say wide, but it's wide-ish for a racing flat of this, um, what we're talking about here. This has got quite a bit of uh, real estate on it versus this. And actually, I kind of dig that. Um, this has also got a wider toe box, which I kind of like, and I prefer the upper on this versus this weave on here. That said, I actually prefer this shoe. Why do I prefer this shoe? For me, this is too stiff uh, and too heavy uh, with regards to landing. I just felt like I was, yeah, I just, I just felt like I was really hitting the pavement hard. And again, I've got really bad running form. If you're watching this video, I'm not a particularly fast runner. I don't run marathons in three hours. Uh, I'm looking at this from a view like of everyday runners who are just going out there to try to run their fastest and that's why we buy these shoes to try and run faster, okay? Yes, you should be spending the money on getting running lessons and all that sort of stuff, but whatever, right? So this was really, yeah, it was kind of feeling hard and, and, and yeah, it was kind of, it wasn't, it wasn't beating me up, but I, I do worry what this is going to be like over 26.2 miles. Even though they say, Brooks, that over 26.2 miles, this has got structure in it that will help your running form and all that sort of stuff when you get tired. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but we'll find out in a couple of weeks. This, though, this just feels amazing. This shoe, and I can't tell you how good... I mean, it's, what's the best way to describe it? You, it's like someone's pushing you along. It's like someone's willing you on, on your feet. And, it, and that's the sort of feeling you get from it. It is amazing, this shoe, to run in it. Now, I did the Silverstone half, and I ran that in 1.45, I think. Uh, I was filming, I was mucking about, I was pacing Billy. So, yes, I could have gone faster. It felt great on that run. It really felt great. And I can't wait to put this on a marathon in a couple of weeks to see what we can do, because I've got a feeling this is going to work wonders. The lacing on this is better than the lacing on that. I struggle to get that locked down versus this. So that's another thing against that shoe. But I think they do both have a place in this world. I think if you've got a if you're a got a wider foot and you and you prefer a stiffer ride and you prefer and you're new uh, you're more accustomed to a, a racing flat over a marathon distance. This is the one to go for. If you're looking for something that's really going to kick you on and you're going to feel great in, then this is the one to go for. 
if that makes any sense. They're both a load of money. There's no denying that. They're both excessive amounts of money and they've both got limited lifespans, 50 to 100 miles on this one, for example. So they're not for everybody, right? But I think as a marathon racing shoe, for me personally, it's gotta be this bad boy. <laughs>